passion. And every single person here, every single person here can represent Trayvon Martin's family. What they're going through, what they're experiencing is incomprehensible, disgusting, cruel, and evil. It is up to us to, stay, to take a stand. We have to make sure that this is a shot heard around the world. take the mic, uh, Megan, I just want to take this opportunity to ask you guys to lift your Skittles up in the air. If you don't have your Skittles, lift up your iced tea. If you don't have your iced tea, lift up a fist. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I want you to look, I want you to turn to your neighbor. You say, you repeat after me. Neighbor. Neighbor. They gonna learn today. They gonna learn today. What's up, man? Hey, what's up, man? <laughs> I just want to let everyone know that we plan this event. Yeah, you get it. Four days we plan this event. It is an honor to be here. Myself, I'm Megan. This is Malika. This is Heather. And our friend Yolanda from Florida. She helped plan this event from Florida. So as long as Zimmerman is still free, here we will be. The justice for Trayvon. Again, I'm Heather, and I just want to echo the same that you've heard from Maleka and Megan um, both, that it just it means so much to see all of you here today and to stand in solidarity with us and Tremont Martin's family as we pray for that family that justice is served. We, we know what's taking place has certainly been an unjust. So I want to start us off with a rally chant get us crunk and then we're going to move into our guest speakers. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No peace, no justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. Justice, no peace. Justice, no peace. My brothers and my sisters, if you allow us in this moment, if we did not want to go any further, I'm um, in this moment uh, to not deal with the fact that there was a tragedy that brought us here. There was a tragedy that brought us here, and we could deal with tragedy if justice had been served. It would have still been a tragedy, it would have still been a hard story, but at the end of the day, we know that sick people do sick things. But the problem we're facing right now is not just sick people doing sick things, but a sick system that will not allow justice to be heard. Amen. And so there's a need for us, even as we chant and even as we sing and even as we protest, that we also need to remember this family that is dealing with this tragedy and try to move past this tragedy in the midst of injustice. So if you were with me, we would like to put our hoodies up, bow our heads, and have a moment of silence for the life, the memory of Brother Trayvon Martin. Death in his life never be in vain. All over, please make sure that there are petitions, there are volunteers who are passing out petitions that we want to be signed so that we can be able to um, have an influence and be able to continue to move along this justice path. Now I want to bring up to this mic Love. a freedom fighter, a gentleman, a clergyman who has been I'm fighting for freedom by, in this by the region uh, for years and years. I am grateful and honored to be on the same steps as this gentleman. Yeah, I need yeah, you all to make some noise around the Hagler's in the house today. <laughs> Are you down here? Thank you so much. First of all, oh. I really want to thank these four sisters. Three here, and you said one in Florida. 
Amen. Who have brought us together. Okay, well, who brought us together. Well, we, we need, who saw a vision of what or, needs or, to happen. Or, 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 because, or, or, sisters or, and brothers, or, one thing that we know. Folks don't believe that you're hurting until you say ouch. Yeah. Folks don't believe that you can win anything or you have any dignity until you're ready to stand up. We're standing up today because we are all Trayvon Martins. We're standing up today because one thing that is true is that racism has been pervasive in this country since the first folks set their foot on Plymouth Rock. And it has been maturing and moving ever since. When, the, when, when we elected President Obama, all the pundits on TV said, oh, now we're in a post-racial era. Well, a post-racial era where you don't have to have a clan robe, but you can be Rush Limbaugh on the radio, or you can be You see, you see, what has happened is that racism has become so insidious, and when you mix guns with race and racism, you're bound to have a disaster happen. And sisters and brothers, one thing that we know is that folks are used to shooting down black folk and never going to jail. We know the history around that, but we're here to say that enough is enough. It is a brand new day in America. We're going to stand up and we're going to stand strong. Yeah. 